Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. And well, Christmas is officially behind us. New year ahead of us. And a lot of times with the new year, comes a new job. So we're here with uh, Carla Daniels from Terra and you're, you're with our human resources department here. And uh, we thought it might be nice to sit and talk a little bit about some tips and tricks for people that are about to go out to an interview yeah. or even that first day on the job. Some just some really good ideas for people. Uh, sometimes people get so nervous and so wrapped around the actual um, interview itself they, that they forget about them. And right. uh, you need to be going in there and looking presentable and being as professional as possible. That's right. Yeah, when you're going to an interview, really, you're there to sell yourself. Mm -hmm. So you want to make a good first impression with not only your knowledge, but also with how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. So you want to come across as confident, polished, professional. I think a good place to start is with an interview wardrobe. And that's true. A lot of times when we think about when we're having a good day, whether it's a man or a woman, actually, um, when you are in a a good outfit and you are, you feel you know you have, you've got good hair you're polished you're you know you've got a good haircut things are going on you actually feel more confident with that than when you're sitting at home in your track pants and you've been inside for a couple of days right? we know that difference that feeling you know so first off let's just talk a little bit about that let's talk about the wardrobe and and maybe what we should and shouldn't wear okay <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going for a more traditional corporate type of interview, you're gonna to wanna to stay with you know classic suit maybe mm -hmm. um, for a man or a woman. So black, navy, dark gray. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want anything too loud. You don't want crazy patterns or too bright of color. Like um, you don't want some going in there with giant shoulder pads and some big thing that has birds on it. And right, or some crazy pattern. <laughs> and we're like, oh, she's a little wacky. <laughs> it's going to be distracting. Right. You don't want them to be focusing on the crazy thing you're wearing. Mm -hmm. You want them to focus on you and what you're saying so you can get across, you know, your skills and knowledge. And I think it's probably with something like that, as you mentioned, if we're, if we're focusing kind of on corporate, you know, and banking or anything like that, any type of business, you so take a look at when you're dealing with that business or just in general, the people that work at that business. And it is, as you say, it's more more subdued, subdued, it's very professional and streamlined and not wild and crazy. You can start bringing that in later once you have the job. Right, yeah. <laughs> and they can't get rid of you because you're so good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, if you're going for an interview that's maybe a little bit less traditional, mm -hmm. um, more business casual, you're still going to want to look polished and professional. So mm -hmm. no jeans, no tights, no leggings, um, maybe just a nice pair of dress pants. Sure. Sweater set if you're a girl. Mm -hmm. um, for a man, you know, maybe a dress shirt, a button down shirt. You're still going to want to look polished and professional, but mm -hmm. you don't want to be too overdressed. Right, that's the thing. And a lot of times, men nowadays particularly can get away with that, that, you know, that sports jacket, that nice blazer that sort of works without having to go to a tie. Right. And that even works in, in high corporate, uh, you know, settings a lot of times is that people are seeing that more often. But again, it's always better to be more on probably on the overdressed than underdressed when it comes to this type of thing just because you want to look as professional as possible yeah. and that you care and you took a moment to think about it. Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'd say for sure it's always better to be a little bit overdressed than underdressed. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, aim to dress a little bit better than you would in your in your everyday mm -hmm. sure. work day. Um, if you, even if you're going for a job that's maybe, you know, in the service industry or a restaurant, you're mm -hmm. still going to want to be professional. Sure. So no jeans, you know, you want to be yes. clean, no mm -hmm. rips, no mm -hmm. pressed, no wrinkles. I was going to say, because a lot of times people will, you know, you, you'll have that, that wrinkled little jacket or whatever, and you, it's really not appropriate to be wearing during an interview. Um, and again, even it comes down to footwear, regardless of what you are wearing in your feet, you want to make sure, you know, it's, uh, you know, they're polished and they're clean. You're not say, carrying mud around. <laughs> Especially at this time of year, you know, mm -hmm. there's all the salt on the roads. You're going to mm -hmm. want to make sure that your shoes are clean. Sure. Um, and really, yeah, just overall polished mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. So that you didn't just wake up and you have bed head or you know, yeah. <laughs> take a little moment. And it's many a lot, you know, some women don't like to wear makeup. Maybe put on a little bit of something. Make sure you do have maybe just some mascara and some, some lip gloss or something. Again, just to make it look like you made an effort. Yeah, just little details too. You know, right. having you know, your fingers and nails done. Yes. And yeah, looking nice and polished. Maybe mm -hmm. even a little bit of lip gloss. Sure. Something and I think sometimes together. when it comes to fingernails as well, obviously we know as females right now, anything goes when it comes like crazy designs right now to all different kinds of bright colors. But maybe perhaps for this interview at this time, tone down and don't go with the bright royal blues or oranges or crazy nails just to make it again go along with the outfit and uh and, and maybe not quite be too trendy yeah everything should be just a little bit you know more subdued i yes. think you don't want 
Yeah, to come up. You don't want them to remember you for what you look like or what you were wearing. Right, like too much makeup. If there's like, the, you know, a lot heavy, heavy, heavy can be very distracting as well. Yeah. Because again, they know that obviously eye contact with a client, a potential client, would be the first thing. And so they, you don't want the client to be thinking, wow, what's going on? I'm, I'm distracted by, you know, her lipstick dripping off her face or something like exactly. that, right? So yeah. it's just a matter of just balance and overall polish, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, perhaps so when someone's walking in the door and say someone was coming in to uh, you know talk to you a little bit obviously they're 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 looking at a position um, what, what would you say that you know would be some good things to some skills some just some things in your back pocket when you go into that interview when you're starting the interview mm -hmm. so you're looking good you're ready mm -hmm. to go ready to go I think it's important to prepare for an interview yes so before the interview even happens you need to prepare so you know make sure you know about the company make mm -hmm. sure you know exactly what they do who the key players are who you're going to be meeting with. Mm -hmm. So I would say research all that beforehand so you have a good grasp know of the company. Know some names and know, know what names. the company's about. You're right. Yeah. A little bit of history on the company so you can speak to it. And uh, it is amazing during interviews, they will just ask you a question just to kind of throw you off, just a little bit about the company, something it may be, right? And you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to be, really? I didn't know that you guys did that. Yeah, you or, don't want to look unprepared at all. Right, so right. For sure, and you also want to prepare for what the role is. Mm -hmm. So make sure you know that job posting. Make sure you know exactly what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> take a few key words from the posting to know exactly what they're they're That's after. That's right. Actually, that's a really good point. Is yeah, exactly take a look at what they are requiring for this yeah. position, and let them know that you do have those skills. That's right. Right, and be very. I think it's a, it comes with confidence, and again, eye contact, posture. Right. important for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. eye contact like you you'd mentioned that yes. before that's yep. really important yep. sometimes that's sort of a hard balance to find because you don't want to appear crazy yeah you like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's yeah that's right. you don't want crazy eyes but, but you, you don't want to be yeah like, but you don't want to be mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. eye contact's very important. Mm -hmm. You know, just overall confidence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, again, with males and females, uh, anything, any do's or don'ts, like in terms of uh, don'ts, let's go with don'ts now. Anything that maybe you should just avoid, things you shouldn't say? So, I think for don'ts, um, we already talked about being, you know, really subdued with your, your makeup and that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say don't um, have a lot of, this is a, sort of a weird one, but don't wear a lot of <laughs> perfume. Or cologne. Okay. Yeah. A lot of places actually are scent free. Yes, because people have serious allergies, allergies. nowadays. Right? And you don't want to find that out when you're in the middle of the interview and your interviewer <laughs> has a sneezing attack. So yeah, yeah. It's true. So don't. Yeah. That's a good one. So don't do that. Um, for jewelry, I'm going to yep. talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah. You don't want anything that jangles or dangles. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to come too in noisy with. And yeah, you know, your hands and you know, yeah. a wrist full of bracelets. And right. If they can hear you walk into the room before sure. you get there, you're probably wearing too much jewelry. So exactly. yeah, again, just very good. Well, Carla, we That's could talk it. longer, couldn't we? But we're already out of time. So again, <laughs> always just look up on the internet too and look for good tips because uh, you want to make the, you want to get that job. That's it's right. 2015 coming. Thank you so much. We'll be at more chair at home after this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. I am a truth seeker. A storyteller. A dedicated volunteer. I am a caring neighbor. A customer's best friend. And a client advocate. I am a survivor. A social media junkie. A proud father of four and problem solver. I am the Hamilton Spectator. 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 We are the Hamilton Spectator. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots.
Welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with Michelle from Michelle My Bell in a beautiful little bridal salon here in Waterdown. Yes, thank and, you. And um, so tell me how this all came to be for you to be here in Waterdown in your, your this cute little salon. <laughs> well, first off, my mom and I own the store together, mm -hmm. and uh, she's the one who named the store after me. She used to sing <laughs> me that little song, Michelle My Bell. I know, it's the first thing that comes to mind, right? Seriously. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, uh, it was always our dream to, to have a store together or to have a business together. And I have always loved fashion. My mom has always loved bridal. So we well, uh, well, we just work thought, <laughs> exactly. So we just thought we'd kind of mix them together. And mm -hmm. then we found this little store that was uh, open mm -hmm. to, to rent out. And we just jumped at the chance when we saw it because we just loved the fact that it has two levels for the brides. And mm -hmm. they kind of had their own little privacy area where they don't yes. have to try in front of the whole world kind of thing when they first walk and, in. And you know, and that's the thing when you are going for a dress, it's not not like we do this every day, right? Exactly. So this is a very special moment. It, and obviously, exactly. you know, the second a bride walks in the door, you know, give me some of the questions <laughs> you ask a bride right away. Uh, well, their name first off. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, their wedding date. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what style of dress they are pictured on themselves in, mm -hmm. and um, what... Because uh, you kind of have to narrow it down, right? We do have Quickly. to narrow it down. <laughs> yes. The, the, sometimes when they don't really have a style in their mind, that's mm -hmm. usually when we have to kind of get them in every different shape that they like, and some that they don't even like because that might, might be the style that they end up going with. Well, I've heard so. that happens a lot, right? I know that even happened with mine was it was one that, you know, my mom sort of said, hey, take a look. I'm like, all right, sure, I'll try it. But it wasn't what I thought. Exactly. Right? So it's up to you, uh, yes. both you and your mom, to, to say, hey, you know what? The, you know, just the, whether it's the, the width of your shoulders and uh, your overall body type, this might look good on you and it might, you know, you exactly. don't know. Exactly. No, that's, right? that's exactly right. That's mm -hmm. exactly what we do. Sometimes I have to push them yes. into a and into a direction that I know that will really work. Right. And they and come out and they're and like, oh, oh exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or it surprises them so much that they get overwhelmed because they didn't expect it to turn out so well. Mm -hmm. So they have to take a step back and kind of be like, oh, now I have to kind of change my mind here mm -hmm. and go with this style instead. Well, so. How lucky are you guys that you get to work in such a happy environment, right? Yes. This is a happy time. So this we, is so fun. We are very blessed that way. Mm -hmm. I, I can't even tell you how blessed we are. We, we thank we thank God every day because of how how we're so lucky to have this store and mm -hmm. all the wonderful wonderful people and customers that come into our life because of it. So, so we're edging towards 2015 right now. So we want yes. to talk a little bit about some of the trends that we're seeing. And um, it, you know, why don't we? We'll take a look at one of our models right now. And okay. uh, as we do, we can kind of go along the way and we'll talk about some of the trends that we see. But uh, sure. our first model, and um, describe to me what uh, what she's wearing. Well, Lindsay, she's wearing a fit and flare lace gown. Mm -hmm. It's actually an oyster underlayer. So it's a little bit of a darker, like a pewter underlayer. Mm -hmm. So it shows a lace off a little bit more. I see, yeah. Which is very common right now for, for most bridal gowns. A lot of them like to have, instead of just the ivory or the white, especially with lace, they like to have a little bit of a different color underlay. So it makes the top uh, lace stand out that much more. I see, okay. Or so blush is very in right now, or okay. champagne is very in right now So you are well. seeing just those, just those off hues, right? Ex just to give some dimension. Exactly. Okay. And she's got a very beautiful lace v-neck, mm -hmm. which also has a beautiful, beautiful lace uh, v-neck in the back as well. Okay. And a beautiful lace train as well. And which vintage, it's very vintage look, yes, which is, is very nice. Yes, it is. And so, yes. um, again, lots of lace right now, still seeing yes, that, right? Yes, very much um, so. I know, actually, I've, I've been to a lot of weddings this year, and again, yeah. uh, I've definitely seen that as the, as the common yes. uh, trend. Lace it's very elegant. Very, very feminine, right? It is. It's mm -hmm. something that's timeless. Yes. It'll never go out of style. Mm -hmm. At least uh, you'll never look back and say, what was I thinking? Right, exactly, because that, that's the thing. We can go back in time for hundreds of years and look at all these beautiful lace creations and that really, you are, you're are you right. They're exact. Just sort of traditional. Then you go, if you go more the couture style, you know in two years from now something, you're going, oh God. Yeah, you've got some big piece coming off <laughs> yeah, your shoulder exactly. sticking out then. Nice yeah. big bird in your hair. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something might not, uh, might, you might just kick yourself a little bit later exactly, on. Exactly, right? yes. Okay, yeah. so why don't, we, uh, why don't we look at our next model? as well. All right. And Chloe, she's wearing a beautiful ball gown mm -hmm. with a high illusion neckline, all beaded top with okay. a nice organza tulle mm -hmm. uh, tr uh, bottom. Mm. And with her allu high illusion neckline actually is extremely in oh, for, like the, for the new 2015 collections along with sleeves too as well actually. Lace oh. sleeves or organza sleeves or uh, yeah, those two sleeves wow. are very in well as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, hers has a beautiful train as well, nice mm -hmm. long train and a nice V back as well. Goes into a nice V as well. Beautiful. So um, seeing more sparkle to this one. Yes. So you are still seeing lots of stones we, and sparkle. We, yes, we still have we still have the lace which mm -hmm. is more of the more of the simplicity of mm -hmm. the dress. Yes. And then we do have a lot of the ball gowns still with that still have that 
crystal and the pearls and the sparkle mm -hmm. and the sequins because some of the, bri the brides do want to sparkle sometimes. So sure. it's yes. you that usually it's the only time you can really do that. So yeah, I know it's true, right? Yeah. And so I guess a lot of times venue can matter as well, right? Exactly. Um, yes. You know, it, if you were having sort of one of those like epic evenings, uh, sort of a night wedding, having lots of glitz and sparkle, and a big really ballroom kind of thing, right? A huge Absolutely. ballroom setting versus maybe being outdoors or maybe being uh, you know a lot of people getting married away, yeah, uh, but still exactly. want to wear a white dress. So Absolutely. lots to factor in. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. I noticed that usually like when a lot of barns weddings right now are very in right now. Yes, and uh, and like um, outdoor weddings are also very in, especially during the summertime, like garden weddings that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And usually for those types of weddings, we see a lot of organza or a lot of lace. Yes, because okay. lace and barn it kind of gives that vintage feel, mm -hmm. and lace you can never go wrong with lace again. So, mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, you know lengths, are we still seeing like full full length? Are we seeing any of the cropped ones? Once in a while, someone sports one of those. But yes, not too often. Not right? too often. No. I would still say that the full length is definitely something that you still see mm -hmm. a lot in today's day. But uh, yeah. you might still see the T length for the garden weddings. Sure. And for like the backyard kind of weddings, some of the girls want to look that, that cutesy look. Mm -hmm. And that's usually when they wear the, the 50s look with the little T length right, dress exactly. or anything like that. In terms of fit, obviously, you know, the one we were just looking at goes quite out. And, yes. um, you know, I know obviously it depends on your body type as well. And Absolutely. sort of what works for you. But uh, still seeing some of the nice really fitted ones, like the, the one we have behind us here just on the, uh, on the, the mannequin. Yes. Uh, just a beautiful, nice, very fitted, 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 and then a little flare at the bottom. Yes, that's more, the one that's behind me actually is actually more of a, it's actually a very fitted fit and flare. Mm -hmm. So it's actually between a fit and flare and a mermaid because uh. it does go pretty low, but it doesn't actually go all the way down all to the, the way knee. Down. Right. When you go to the knee, that's usually when you hit the mermaid. Okay. But it's a little higher than the knee, so yes. that's when you consider it the fit and flare. It's a beautiful dress, and that's it got is. lots that's of That's got lots of sparkles. Yes, lots okay. of sparkles. Okay, so if a bride right now is watching this and uh, you know they just maybe got perhaps engaged over Christmas, which we see happens a lot it of happens times. Happens a lot. Or yes. for maybe in a couple of days on New Year's. Yeah. Um, how much time out should they be ordering their dress? Well, we always say it takes about six to eight months for the dresses to come in okay. and then we always ask for about two to three months for alterations just so you don't have to stress over the alterations and mm -hmm. worry about getting it in time or anything like that right yeah. uh, again there's also we can always do a rush mm -hmm. but we always say like there's some brides that are getting married out in six months and they kind of need that dress yes, right away. So in that true. situation, we need to kind of get the rush in, and we it okay. costs a lecture to do the rush. But mm -hmm. in that, if you still want to get that dream dress you if always you want, wanted, yeah. you can do the rush that way. And okay. that usually takes about four months to come in. Okay, and obviously it's very exciting when you first find that uh, magical dress, and that's a yes. great moment for everybody, yes. right, the family. But uh, also when you come back for that final fitting just before, and of course, you know, a lot of women are out there like eating carrot sticks before, <laughs> and I'm sure you have to do the <laughs> yes, <laughs> not that we Take endorse that, but. Of, yeah. <laughs> Well, we either get the stress eaters, yes. so they so they sometimes they they could have gained some it weight, goes the other way, or or they don't mm -hmm. eat much and mm -hmm. then they've lost some weight. So, yeah. but it's very rare when they actually are the same size as they were when Isn't they first funny? when they first bought the dress. Oh, yes. it's such an exciting time, but stressful time. Yes. But it's just a one big yes. fan, it's fancy party, oh. and obviously the dress is the the big uh, focal point. So, oh, thank absolutely. you, Michelle, for having us no, in here thank today. Thank you for having us, Michelle Mybell here in uh, downtown Waterdown. We'll be back with more Tara at home. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color. I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We are at the Spectator Go Cooking Kitchen today and we're back with the Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And uh, we're getting ready to say host a yes. New Year's Eve party and uh, we're gonna do it up nice and fancy. Yeah, you know what, New Year's Eve once a year comes around so mm -hmm. this is the time where people tend to go all out. 
you yes. know, when it, and if food tends to be the pinnacle, and then of course you're sure. looking at the the wine and the beer and everything mm -hmm. else you want to pair with it. Mm -hmm. So I thought for today, if you're going to stay home and you're going to throw a, a party, I thought we'd do a really neat surf and turf here. And it's it's um, I didn't bring any sides for it. It's just going to be a beef tenderloin. We have a broiled lobster tail, and we have some jumbo green tiger shrimp, which we're going to mm. sear. Awesome. Um, and then what I've got here, now these ones are the ones that you have to do ahead of time. Okay. This one here is a roasted red pepper marmalade. Okay, so you roast some peppers, then you have to take the skin off, and then you have to dice them, saute them down. And what I've done in there is I've added some sugar, and then I used uh, white vinegar. So there's a nice acidity okay. there, and a little bit of chilies. Mm. So that the sugar, the chilies, and the vinegar all offset and balance the whole thing out. And what it does is once you add gelatin to it, it forms like a jelly. Sure. And that's how I put it. Then we put it in the cup and we let it set. Okay. Okay. And this really works well with the shrimp especially. But you're saying that making these ahead of time definitely key because as you key. say, that one's, you know, yeah. it's got some work behind it's it. It's got some work and it also it takes about 24 hours for it to set. I mean, ah, you could okay. probably rush it, but if you let it set in the fridge at tw for about 24 hours, it, it firms yeah. up nicely. Okay. And why wouldn't you it. make it ahead of time when you're, you know, exactly. you're hosting you want to do it? as much as you can ahead of time. Exactly. And the other one here is a sweet pea puree. Oh, okay. I was wondering what that was. Yeah. I wasn't sure what was involved in there. It looked like there was, was there wasabi or anything, but it has a really nice bright nope. green to it, so it's sweet pea. Nice color. Um, and the flavor in there, what it's going to do is with this dish, because everything here is such a savory and, and very mm -hmm. uh, bold flavors, this is just going to give a little bit of a lightness to a little bit of a spring. Okay. To the whole well, thing. we need to see how this all comes together. Yes. All right. So where are we going to start? We're going to start with. We our, have uh, a lobster tail. Nice little lobster. And tail. what I do is I have the lobster tail, and all I did is I split the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you take your knife, split the back. I'm going to add a little bit of salt on that, and not too much, and a little bit of pepper. Okay. And then I put it on a tray, and I'm putting it in the oven, and I'm broiling it. Okay, so I put it on a high broil, but I'm not putting it on the top rack. I'm going to put it on a middle middle rack. Okay. Okay. And again, obviously with uh, seafood as well, a lot of people seem to associate seafood with New Year's too, or around mm -hmm. you know even in generally into the Christmas holidays, the holiday season. But uh, people really go and go get their have big lobster fasts and all kinds of fun. So that's that's a, where a all great the seafood it really comes out at yep. this time of the year. Mm -hmm, exactly. Like I said, it's the one time of the year that people feel like you know what I'm going to splurge a little more on sure. the dinner. So mm -hmm. now we have our beef tenderloin. I'm going to add a, a little bit of oil to it. We have some salt. Now I haven't done anything to it. It's just a beef tenderloin that's been cleared, cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Take the whole tenderloin, we clean it, and then we um, just cut them. And that's okay. what you have here. So there's no marinade on it, nothing no. like that. Well that's a great part is when you just just a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. That's, that's it. It, that's what gives steak such a great flavor, right? It does. Any it's kind you of know what if, especially you know the, the beef that we use is all grain fed, mm, hormone free. It looks and great. you know what? It's just got natural flavor. You don't need to add anything no. to it. So the you know if you're using a cheaper cut, then you might want to think about marinating for a, a bit of time first. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, of course when you're cooking this, my ideal way of cooking this would be to do it on a barbecue. However, we don't have a barbecue here, right. so I brought my trusty little grill pan, which okay. is going to kind of work. And that's good, you know, because some, I mean, some people are very brave and they go out and they barbecue in the middle of the winter and yeah. whatever, but who knows what's going to be happening on New Year's Eve and uh, so that's right. this is great to have. It this is. is. You know what, they are good and you know, if you get it nice and hot, mm -hmm. it will work very similar. You won't get that smokiness that you get off of a barbecue, right. but it'll get the grill marks get and grill you know what, a lot everything. of time uh, people look at it and they'll, they'll their, their senses will pick up a, a smokiness even mm -hmm. if it's not there just because they see the grill marks. So you can kind of, you can trick them trick a little people. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell you that. <laughs> no. Of course you didn't. All right. So we have that. And mm -hmm. of course, you're going to cook it any way you want. Mm -hmm. I suggest cooking it medium rare. Right. I find that if you cook it rare, you might be, I mean, you're searing in some of the juices on rare and stuff like that, but you're not getting the... Um, you're not getting the right texture out of it. It might be a little bit too chewy. Where you, once you get yes. to medium rare, it tends to break down a little bit more. It's a mm -hmm. little bit easier to cut. Still soft, still got tons Just of that flavor in it. Perfect amount. It's the perfect amount. Yeah, and okay. some people. I mean, some people struggle with that. But obviously, if you're entertaining, you can you can ask people. And if you yeah. want to, they want theirs cooked a little bit more. That's cool, right? Yep. And yeah. then of course, what you do is when you're cooking, if you do have people that want to do other things, you can put your ones that are well done or medium well on first, sure. and then work on the other ones as you go along. Okay. Okay? Yep. So we have that going on. Now, I'm going to turn on my stove over here, and these are, these shrimp take almost no time at all to cook. Shrimp That's are great very, part very seafood, quick. That's right? <laughs> It is. You know, they're very, very quick, and people tend to overcook shrimp. Mm -hmm. Now, what you have to remember is any time that you use a, a, a seafood, a crustacean, mm -hmm. it will continue to cook off of the heat. 
Ah. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind when you're doing it. So it's a quick cook, get them off, and serve them. That's right. <laughs> right. And all I put there was a touch of oil, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to use, this is brown butter, and it's solidified oh, again. Wondering. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So I'm going to put the brown butter in there. I'm going to keep on, hang on to that because when we're done with the steak, we're going to put a nice dollop of brown butter right on top of that steak. <laughs> you said that is that time of year, right? We're, it is. Uh, we're hunkering down it for is. some That's cold right. weather. So, uh, <laughs> we have some garlic. Put on the patty. <laughs> <laughs> and all they are, I left the tails on, mm -hmm. and all I did was peel the, the shell on the outside. Okay. Okay. And that tail, I mean, if you really want, you can take the tail off. It's more for presentation than anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, before I put that on, I'm going to make sure that my steak is almost ready to go. We're just sautéing that garlic nice and lightly. Obviously, when you're trying to uh, sear a steak and, and put grill marks in that, you keep it until it's ready to go as, sti as still as possible, right? You don't want to be moving it around all over the place and just nope. checking and then... That's it. You're yeah. going to turn it 90 degrees, yep. and that's how you're going to get those nice hash marks sure. on it. And sure. then you're going to flip it over and finish it off. That's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so um, the shrimp we'll put on, as you say, that's the last thing you want to do. That's about the last thing you're going to do. That's going to cook so, so quickly. That's right. And uh, basically, when we come all together, how long is the lobster tail in the oven again for? Uh, it takes about 15 minutes, 15, okay. 20 minutes, depending on how hot your oven is. Right, and a, on a broil, but low on down a lower, in the oven. Yeah. And then we're going to kind of place this all together and uh, show off this fancy meal. You got to really yeah. pick your friends properly <laughs> for this because you're putting some money into this one. <laughs> that's right. All right, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back in a few and we'll show it all off. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the Medallion Plant Tag. Medallion Plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Tara at Home. I'm back with Chef Mark, and we're making a fantastic New Year's Eve dinner. Nice and fancy, seafood, surf and turf. Surf and turf, yes. So what I've done here is the steak, when it was about rare, I've, I've turned it, mm -hmm. I flipped it, I turned it again, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's got hash marks on both sides. What I've done, I turned the pan right off. Okay. okay. So you have to let your ste steaks rest anyway. Right. Might as well let it rest in this pan, okay? okay? And it will it'll bleed out one color. So in other words, it'll go from rare to medium rare. Okay. Okay, okay so we sure. just left that, so I've turned it down and it's mm -hmm. just sitting there resting and all the juices are coming That looks really good back. the way you did that. It's a nice... You're a real professional there, right? <laughs> did it once or twice before. <laughs> Pretty fancy. <so. laughs> like, man, those are good grill marks. All right, so we have our shrimp in and our lobster. Lobster's done. So I'm just gonna have that sitting. There we go. Now the lobster is dry, there's nothing on it, and that's because we have that butter. Oh, right. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take out this marmalade. Oh, so you're going to kind of keep him in his little mold like that. That's great. I'm hoping day. he stays in his mold. <laughs> we'll I see what that, happens. Right? You're hoping. There we go. Oh, fun. So we have that. Yep. We have our puree here. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to take some butter, I'm going to put it right on top of the steak. I'm going to take a little piece of butter and I'm going to put it on top of the lobster. Oh, the lobster's wait. nice and hot. <laughs> and this is just going to, that brown butter is just going to add all it's kinds of amazing flavor, right? add a ton of flavor to the whole thing. And how perfect this for your New Year's Eve and your friends coming over and having a great night. And let them come over early, spend the whole night and... Just have a good time. Hang out, drink some wine, and yep. away you go. And away you go. And so, shrimp are done. The resistance, the shrimp. And this is our uh, last show of the year. And uh, Mark, always a pleasure working with you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Looks amazing. Mm, can't wait to try it. Go. And uh, happy New Year's to all of you. I hope you have a great happy New Year's, and we will see you in 2015. Beautiful.